Hello dear students, consider this question from modern physics. Again you can pause, read it carefully. Let me explain what it says and then uh, we can move forward to solve it. It says there is a small spherical pellet of uh, radioactive element. So it is a beta radioactive element which is over here. This is small sphere at the center and concentric to this there is a metallic sphere has been placed over here which is a thin and uh, this is connected with a rod like this and there is a circuit resistance and this switch over here then uh, what is happening let me explain it says um, an radioactive decays per second occur because of this element which is uh, at the center and whatever the electrons are being emitted be, uh, in this beta uh, radioactivity then you will find that these electrons have uniformly distributed energy in this interval W minimum to W maximum and this energy is in electron volt. This sphere and this rod they have been insulated each from each other on this juncture and the circuit can be completed like this. We need to find the range of this external load resistance R so that this device can work as a constant current source and then as a voltage source. So this is our question. Now let us try to understand how uh, this can behave like a source voltage or current. Now this is a beta decay, you must be knowing beta decay what happens in a beta decay material. So some element you know that Z and A this gets converted into some another element in which you will find that protons population goes up and neutron population reduces by one. Total number of nucleons remains same you know that and along with this one electron comes in along with this positron and some energy and all that. So this is beta decay. In, in nutshell what is happening? A neutron is getting converted into proton plus electron plus antineutrino plus energy. This is what is happening. Anyway, we are not much require uh, this thing in this particular case. We are uh, simply taking the idea from there. Point is that when, when this um, radioactive material changes from one to another element, so it is generating electrons and these electrons are now free. These free electrons will move like this and if this switch is closed it will be moving like this and these free electrons are going to take uh, location of this sphere. So electrons will come from this element and come uh, complete the circuit and they will be coming on the surface of metallic sphere and you know metallic sphere can store the charge. So this is how you will find there is going to be current running on this resistance. So that means this is basically behaving like a source of current you can say or source of voltage. We need to go in deep and think uh, what about this resistance values when it is behaving like current source and voltage source. So till now you must have understood how this is uh, behaving like a source and the circuit is completed. Now let's uh, go ahead and carry on this cal these calculations. Uh, so um, it says like uh, electrons are coming outside so they are making a current. N number of radioactive decay per second is taking place. In every radioactive decay one electron is coming outside. So how many electrons will be coming in n uh, radioactive decays is so obvious. It's going to be n into e elect uh, n electrons. So total charge will become n e. This is per second. So how much the current will be running? So current is going to be equal to the number of decays taking per second into the charge of one electron. So this is the amount of current that is going to run through this circuit. Now let's talk about this thing, this device. Now from this device electrons are coming outside. 
electrons are coming outside that means somebody is pushing those electrons to come outside or that means these electrons carrying energy if we think in terms of voltage potential so uh, this will be behaving like some battery or potential potential difference right and that difference is pushing these electrons uh, outside now we can say if v is potential of device then electron energy that means energy of an electron can be thought of how much that energy is going to be let's say call that energy as e e for energy and this energy is going to be equal to e into v because we know that electron volt uh, uh, Volt is the potential difference that we are applying e is the charge. So we multiply E and V. This this much amount of energy is going to be with associated with one electron, one one electron, right? And it says the electron that are being emitted carries energy in this interval. So we can also say uh, this energy V into E. This energy is between this range. For one electron, let's say a dn amount of electrons are being ejected. So, if dn capital N is the number of electrons in uh, dt time, if we are thinking, so these electrons will have this into this total energy, and this total energy can be equated with this uh, w. Let's say, in general, it has a w energy for one electron as per this in electron volt. And dn is going to be the uh, number of electrons produced uh, in dt time. We can verify the units as well over here. Uh, this E is coming in electron volt, and this is also given in electron volts, so they are matching. So from here we can say E v E for electron charge V is the potential of the device that we are thinking is equal to W. Now let's we interpret for the different cases. Let's uh, interpret for the first case. That means we want it to as a constant current source. Constant current source. If this device is acting as a constant current source, so it must be supplying certain current, I current. And it has a potential V. So how much this uh, power it is being generated? We can say this power is being generated is V into I. And we know this I is following, passing through this resistance. So the power generated by this would be equal to the power uh, emitted by uh, this or wasted by this resistance. So that's going to be I square into R. We can carry out further. So this is going to be V is equal to I R. Now this is the V of the device IR, this basically comes out to be Ohm's law. Now if we multiply this both side by E, so this becomes EV is equal to E into IR. Now this EV can be replaced by uh, W, so that can be written as W is equal to IR. Now from here we can say uh, R is going to be equal to W, uh, there is going to be E as well. So this is going to be W divided by E into I. I is an E, so we can substitute it. So that's going to be a W divided by an E into E, that means an E square. Now here comes explanation about uh, R range. Now let's come back to the circuit and think about uh, this again. Uh, the current that is flowing through this is N into E. N is a constant, E is a constant, so current is a constant. So the point constant is uh, there and it's acting as a current source. Okay, so that's a constant current source. So that means this current should maintain in the circuit. What does that say? It simply says the number of electrons that are being emitted in this beta decay, all electrons should be able to travel. If all electrons are able to travel in the circuit, then the total current is going to be any which remains constant that means this circuit will have that any amount of current and we want it to be retained 
Now suppose this resistance is zero. That means there is no resistance. So if there is no resistance, you can run any amount of current. That means you can easily run any amount of current. So that means zero resistance is allowed. When resistance goes off, this current keeps on decreasing, keeps on decreasing. That means its limit uh, is there. And we want this, uh, all electrons that are being pro uh, produced must go there. That means if we are able to allow those electrons which has the least energy, if they are able to go through the circuit, then all other electrons will be able to go through the circuit. That means our current will be uh, whatever it is that will remain the constant. So point is um, R can take its zero value, zero onward value and uh, then after our limit comes for uh, least energetic electron to travel. So if least energetic electron is able to complete the circuit then all other electrons will be able to complete the circuit that means the current in the circuit will be constant and equal to any. That means from this expression we can say R that we can choose is from 0 onward and up to what value up to that value when this least energetic electron is passing through. So we can say from here that R should be having values greater than or equal to 0 they are allowed not an issue you will find any current so you will find this current but it should be less than or equal to that value which value which is able to take this minimum at least this minimum energy electrons should be going. If this fails uh, to travel or complete the circuit, that means some electrons are not able to contribute to the current. That means the current is not a constant source. Making sense? So this is going to be W minimum divided by N E square. So that becomes first part. That means the range of resistance external load that will enable this circuit or this device to act as a constant current source. Now if you got this, we can carry forward and we can explain uh, or find the range for the second part, that's the voltage source. Now it is acting as a voltage source. So if it is acting as a voltage source, so uh, it will be having again the same equation like this and we can have the same equation like this. So we can have the same equation like this or maybe like this. So now it is having a voltage source. in fact acting as a voltage source. So we are having this voltage is equal to or EV is equal to EIR. Now this EV is a W. Now this is a voltage source, right? So that means how much the voltage we can vary. So this voltage is basically dependent on this W. Now we know um, we want the range of R. I is there, that's a constant and we want to change find this range of r since we want to find this range of r you look at this it will allow that this r can take the minimum value when this w is a minimum r can take maximum value when the w is maximum why this is happening because i is a constant and e is a constant so r range will be decided based on the w because we want it as a source for voltage so from here we can claim something like this that uh, R minimum is going to be W minimum divided by E into I which is going to be N E square and R max is going to be is equal to W max divided by N E square. In nutshell you can put the two together and you can claim that uh, the resistance that we can have for, con for voltage source is between these value W minimum upon N E square W sorry that has to max because I'm writing this side so it has to max value and the from minimum N E square so this is the range of uh, external load for voltage source this is the range for external load for a constant current source okay thank you everyone